Hello children, hope you understood in my first lecture whatever topics I covered. Now today is the second lecture and in that second lecture same topic I am going to cover that the story of human evolution. But the story of human evolution is not a short story or a tale. It has vast de description. So children, to understand that, we need to again recall the previous knowledge which we covered in the previous lecture. That the phases of human evolution. We left in primates, hominoids and hominids. Now further we need to see how the second part of hominids which came around the time period of 24 lakh million years ago these hominoids are further divided into homos and asteropathicus. Now let us see what are the difference between homo and australopithecus. Before that we need to understand homo what does it mean. Homo means human and human consists of both male and female. So children, in this way we understood the meaning of homo. Now, the meaning of australopathicus. This australopathicus is divided into two words, austral and pathis. This austral word is taken from Latin word which means southern. Pathicus means ape and this word is taken from Greek. Now we are in differentiation. So let us differentiate Homo with Australopathicus. This Homo has small brain whereas this Australopathicus has large brain. So in this way we can differentiate that these australopathicus might have the features like primates which we have covered in previous chapter. Also children, second feature of homo, they used to walk on two legs and they used to, used to bend their body and also another feature of homo and Australopithecus is that they used to run very fast. They used to run fast whereas their running capacity is slow. Now another feature is that the visibility we can see the visibility of these homos are more sharper than the visibility of these Australopithecus. As homo can run fast so they take less energy to hunt their animal. In the same way, they take more energy to hunt and take more time to catch their animal. So these are the features. So few more features are there like if we talk about teeth structure of Homo and Australopithecus, it is a little funny that Homo has quite thin and good shaped teeth, we can say, whereas these have broader jaws and long type of teeth. You can imagine the picture of devil. The first time if you will meet with Australopithecus, you will get scared. So these are a little bit funny in the structure. So these are the another features. So after understanding the difference between Australopithecus and Homo, now it's time to understand the classification of Homo. So Homo are further divided into three categories. Let us see what were those. Number one, Homo habilis. Second is Homo erectus. Third is Homo sapiens. Now children, these are the subcategories of Homo. Now children, let us see some features of 
Homo habilis, Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. So Homo habilis, they evolved around 2.2 lakh million years ago and these evolved around 1.8 lakh million years ago whereas Homo sapiens also evolved around 1.8 lakh million years ago. Now these all three have some unique features that developed during the duration of these gaps. So let us see what are those. Homo habilis were the first human being who started using tools in their daily life. Whereas Homo erectus, they have unique feature and that is they look little straight in their body posture. It means they have straight body posture. Now, Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens were the most intelligent among Homo habilis erectus. They have high thinking skill. They have high intelligence power and they can use many things which were far better than Homo habilis and erectus. So here we can add more intelligent great thinkers all right Last feature you can describe their presence so the fossils of homo are being found in the east africa and some part of asia whereas these australopithecus were being received from east africa so if we did you ever notice that from where all these fossils were being discovered so let me tell you homo habilis were being discovered in africa and some part of africa which were very popular were homo and ethiopia now homo erectus their fossils were being discovered in africa as well as in asia now homo sapiens their fossils discovered in africa asia and some part of european countries so now children in this topic we again completely understood how the story of evolution of human being took place and further we understood what are the classification of homo these were homo habilis homo erectus and homo sapiens our next topic is modern human being after covering the topic from primates hominoids and hominids now we reached into the stage of around 1.6 lakh million years ago it means this was the time period when modern human being originated on the earth let us see how the opinion about the origin of modern human being is being described so it is being described on the basis of two facts number one is replacement model replacement model another one is regional continuity model So with the help of world's map, let us understand the replacement model and regional continuity model. So, this rough sketch I am just drawing so that you can understand how it originated. Suppose this is Asia, here you suppose up to here is your Asia. Now what happened according to the replacement model it is being assumed that 
modern human might have originated suppose in one place only that is asia suppose all the breeds or the species of modern human suppose they originated in asia only and then from asia they migrated to different different continents and then they evolved over there so this is called as replacement model in which it is being assumed that human being arrived in one continent and then they migrated and that's why there are different different fossils or species are being found in different areas whereas in regional continuity it is being assumed that they were being originated in different different places or continent not only in asia but might be in different part of asia europe or other places and then they might have migrated again to the different places and that's why their fossils are being found in different different places as when we are saying that homo erectus homo habilis and homo sapiens their fossils are being found somewhere in the asia somewhere in europe some of the fossils were found in both asia and europe it means how we are saying all these on the basis of this opinion and concept through replacement model and regional continuity of model ways of obtaining food they are as following number 1 gathering children we are well aware about gathering process you can see in your real life example if you go towards the village area and remote areas still people are doing all these work in their daily routine they used to collect firewood they used to go to jungle and then they used to collect dry leaf this process is called gathering now second way of obtaining food is very common that is hunting now hunting is banned that we all know it is highly punishable but those days if we talk about because they were ancient man early man there was no foundation they used to remain in nature so freely so they don't know about all these things so hunting was another way of obtaining their food children the process of hunting during that time it started around 5 lakh years ago and do you know how do they used to hunt these early man or we can say hominids they used to do in a very planned way and they have very good strategy to catch their animal so in this way we saw these two method gathering and hunting first method of collecting their food was scavenging see children in this method what these early men used to do suppose if any hunter has killed or any animal had died then the dead remains of that animal they used to clean and then they used to take out the flesh from there and then they used to eat so in this way when they used to collect their food that process is called as scavenging which was very popular and it started around 5 lakh years ago now fourth method which is very common fishing it is very popular till this stage and it started around 35000 years ago next sub topic is early human from trees to cave and open air sites why early human used to climb upon tree or stay on tree because they have some fear of wild animal now next why they started living in caves because they want to save themselves from the extreme temperature either hot or cold then gradually after understanding the atmosphere they used to start living outside also and inside in the cave also so we came to know from the thousands of excess arrows or other tools which we received in kenya and another place in france larsat cave where we find many fossils of excess arrows and other type of tool where which are the evidence and proofs that these people means early human used to gather 
and they used to do the type of activity like hunting, making tools and gathering. So in this way, we come to know how early human they were living their life. Another activity which early human used to engage was making of tools. How does they used to make tools? There is a wonderful procedure for making tools. They used to pick up large pebble or piece of stone as a hammer and then with that hammer they used to sharp the edges of another piece of pebble or stone and then they used to create sharp blades, knives and arrows. This complete technique of doing and creating new type of tools is called as the punch blade technique which was very popular. So if this technique also helped to sharpen the ivories and other in carving system. Early human mode of communication, language and art. As we know that hominids were considered as most developed among early men. So they might have started their communication with the help of hand gestures like this. Okay. And might they have the, uh, communicated through their body gestures or facial expression. So these were the way of their communication. It is also being assumed that primates might also have tried to speak and convey their messages, but they might have used sound. So this is being assumed. Also, art is being assumed as a way of communication that we can see from the cave paintings which is there in the Spain and France. Altamira which is very popular in the Spain. Through that we come to know that primates also used to try to speak. And more about early men. Scientist research and other information tells us that we can understand about past early men through hunters and gatherer society and children this hunter gatherer society are present tribal communities from where we can understand about the lifestyle of early men it is being predicted that the lifestyle of hasda and hunsan community of tribal can tell the lifestyle of hominids because their lifestyle the way they are living the way they are eating their food and the way they are communicated all these are resembling to the lifestyles of hominids so how far do you agree that you have to think and tell me in your comment session that hunter and gatherer communities if we go for the study of their life or tribal life then we can come to know more and more about the life of early men so children lots of study is going on still to study about the present life of hunters and gatherers from which they can make out the lifestyle of hominids or the past early men how far do you agree with this that already i asked you that you need to comment that the life of tribal communities the present tribal community can tell or can help us to understand the lifestyle of past